Jenkins. I'm clean. No. On a clear, crisp winter day, 104 years ago, thousands of British, Belgian, French, and German soldiers put down their rifles, stepped out of their trenches, and spent Christmas mingling with their perceived enemies on the Western Front. In the 104 years since, this event has been seen as a kind of miracle, a rare moment of peace just a few months into a war that would eventually claim 15 million lives. We only have snippets of what actually happened on that Christmas 1914. Pope Benedict XV had originally called for a Christmas truce but had been officially rejected. Yet it seems that the sheer misery of daily life in cold, wet, muddy trenches was enough to motivate troops to initiate a truce all their own. It's hard to put exactly, you know, exactly what happened that day. There's a huge range of differing oral accounts, diary entries, letters home from the front. And it's difficult to talk of the typical thing that happened that day. But one person describes it that it was as if there was some kind of curious, festive magic. I would call that magic the Holy Spirit. But nevertheless, they believe that close to 100,000 troops have were believed to have participated in this legendary Christmas truce. Many record that it was the singing of Silent Night that began the openness. One author wrote, Graham Williams of the 5th London Rifle Brigade, said, first the Germans would sing one of their carols and then we would sing one of ours until we started up with, oh, come all you faithful. The Germans immediately joined in singing the same hymn to the Latin words, Adeste Fidelis. I thought, well, this is an extraordinary thing. Nations singing the same carol in the middle of a war. This Christmas marks the 200th anniversary of that carol, Silent Night. And for centuries, the song has crossed borders and overcome crises. It seems to have connected with people, whether whatever their age or their origin, their denomination, whatever. The poem was, it was a poem first. It was written by Father Joseph Moore, a priest from Salzburg, Germany. And it was set to music by Franz Grube, a teacher from Upper Austria. They sang the carol for the very first time at St. Nicola Church in Obendorf near Salzburg. A few years later, families from the Zitterdahl Valley carried the song from Austria into Europe and the rest of the world. It spread quickly. It was brought to the United States, some accounts say, that it was performed on Christmas Day, 1839 in the churchyard at New York's Trinity Church on Wall Street 
by a troupe of traveling Austrians, the Rainier Singers. Today, Silent Night, well, it's, it's sung in 300 languages and dialects. Perhaps, if you're around my uh, genre of age or whatever, um, you might recall the song that Simon and Garfunkel sung in the late 60s called Seven O'Clock News, Silent Night. In that version, the carol is sung to a piano, but over in the background, in a growing crescendo, is a newscast. A newscast with stories of overdoses and murders and politics gone awry and the Vietnam War. And it juxtaposes those things against the silent night. Was it really a silent night, the Lord, the night our Lord was born? Certainly, we have to give up the quaint and romantic notion that Mary giving birth in a barn was somehow a nice thing. I mean, it was filled with animals and stench and dirt. No silent and peaceful night there, but a baby's cry broke through the night and joined in with the sounds of animals in the background. And Bethlehem, well, Bethlehem was bustling because of the census. No quiet night in Bethlehem. And when we think of our own lives, there are so many disruptions, aren't there, to our silent nights? Sirens, babies who cannot sleep, bad news, our own thoughts of disappointments, grief, sadness, preventing us from a romantic notion of a silent night. I don't know about you, but oftentimes worries and other concerns always seem bigger and more insurmountable in the dark and silence of night. Anxiety, wow, that disrupt a silent night. Or for some, maybe the night is too silent. They can go all day pushing out all of those things that disturb us. But when it becomes silent, it becomes flooding in or the silence of, of loss or loneliness or other things. And friends, we too could sing Silent Night, could we not with a newscast in the background of overdoses, killings, political wranglings, and war? But friends, that's why Jesus came. That's why God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to us. Not so much that our nights would not be filled with less anxiety or worries or sadness and grief about our lives, those we love, our country and our world, but that we don't go them alone. One of my favorite Christmas poems is this. Light looked down and saw darkness. I will go there, said light. Peace looked down and saw war. I will go there, said peace. Love looked down and saw hatred. I will go there, said love. So the Lord of light, the Prince of peace, the King of love came down and crept in beside us. Silent Night has been sung for 200 years. It has brought joy, it has brought tears. It has lightened the heavy heart. It has broken through the hardened heart. And it has lifted the hopeless heart. So for you this night, this night may it be holy, calm, and bright. May the infant so tender and mild grant you a heavenly peace that only he can give. For on this night, 
we proclaim Christ the Savior, Son of God, love's poor light is born. May Christmas hope, peace, joy, and love be with you this night. Wherever you are on your journey, whether you are deeply saddened, grieving, whether you are filled with joy and expectation and dreaming big dreams, this one, Jesus, the Christ, the babe of Bethlehem, is with you and in you. Let us pray. Lord, we pray for ourselves, our families, who need hope, peace, joy, and love. Lord, give us strength for today, courage for tomorrow, and peace for the past. Amen.